Hi, welcome to episode 10. Uh, suitably um, to, uh, held today at the Firefox 10 anniversary, 10th anniversary celebrations. But I decided I should just um, talk about curl today. Just uh, since we uh, did the release uh, this Wednesday, November 5, just a couple of days ago. Curl 7.39.0. Basically, uh, another release in a kind of a long series of releases with the minor features and a lot of bug fixes. That is kind of what we do. Um, we have these four weeks features, four week bug fixes, release, four week features, four weeks bug fixes, release. And this was released 142 in total since um, 1998. And the, we had, the, I think we mentioned something like 12 or 13 changes and, and uh, around 60 bug fixes for this time. So all in all, it should make this the best release we ever made. Basically, that's, that's how all releases are. They are supposed to be better than everything else before and we pile up more fixes and we add more features and sort out things. The perhaps biggest thing in this release is the uh, vulnerability uh, th fix that we did. It's called CVE 2014-3707 um, in the CVE language or the, the uh, unique identifier for this flaw. And I, I wanted to mention a little bit about how, what, what, the, what the problem is and, and what the potential drawbacks or I mean the side effects of this bug could potentially be. Um, the reason why you haven't heard anything else uh, from anyone else about this bug is because it's really not that big a deal in, in almost every case. So there's no fancy code word for this and there's no internet falling down and there's no big media hype. Um, the, the, the thing is like this, we, in libcurl, we have an API. So when you want to do a transfer, you create an easy handle. You set a lot of options, like you decide how to do the transfer. Uh, you set the URL, you set the um, protocol versions, and username, password, blah, 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 whatever. There are over 200 different options that you can set. And uh, some of them, or rather a large portion of them, are specific for certain protocols or certain kinds of transfers. So for a typical transfer, you might set perhaps five or 10, in the extreme cases, 20 different options for, for a single transfer. And then you ask for the transfer to get done or get performed. In the easy case, you, you, do, you ask curl easy perform, you call that function, and it'll perform the transfer completely synchronously and return when it's completed or if it failed or whatever when it's complete so you have you have that transfer associated with that handle that you set a lot of options to or in so that um, when you set uh, among the options you have a lot we have a lot of different kinds of options you can set um, plain numbers like uh, I want to speak to port number seven 73, yeah, then I set port to 73. I can set uh, timeout to 60 seconds. I want it to end before 60 seconds or I'll get an error code. Pure numbers, easy. And then we have these uh, strings you can set. I want to read cookies from this file name. I send a string, point, pointer to a string. And uh, in the libcurl interface, we uh, decided we copy all the strings almost. Actually, originally we didn't copy any string, strings at all, which caused problems because it turns out that applications kind of assume that the library copies uh, strings. So, so applications would give us a pointer and uh, we would use that pointer only and they would go ahead and uh, change the contents of the buffer and we would all go uh, nuts and, and do crazy stuff. So we stopped that like five, eight, ten years ago. I don't remember exactly. It doesn't matter. But, but nowadays we copy all the strings except one. That is the buffer we use for regular HTTP post. And, and the option is called 
curl up underscore post fields and the pointer. So you can basically send, oh, I want to send a post. Here's a, a huge buffer, send this. And, and, and libcurl won't copy it, copy it. And basically that's because that could potentially be a very large buffer. And it's kind of a waste to just copy a large chunk of data when in a typical application case, you have made a spe special buffer for for that unique purpose anyway. So it's, it, I mean, copying that buffer isn't that important. And anyway, it's fully documented in, so that's not a problem. And you also set the size of that buffer. So you can tell, you will send this buffer and it's uh, this big in bytes, like 20 bytes, 2000 bytes, 20 megabytes, two gigabytes, send this, all fine. So you set that handle, you do the transfer, you possibly do HTTP post and you have that buffer. Fine, but in but ponder you're you're a different kind of application. You generate that buffer, and you really want libcurl to copy that buffer instead of just referring to pointer in my in my other space. So there's another option called copy post fields. So it'll tell libcurl to copy that buffer and use its own memory for it. Fine. So you do that um, operation. You tell it to copy that buffer. You can free your own and leave Curl Keeper uh, its own buffer and use that in the HTTP post. Fine, still, no problem. But here's here's where the flaw is or was in the previous versions. And there's a patch, of course, and there's now being backported into different versions by different list distros and so on. So, But anyway, we also then have a function in libcurl to duplicate uh, one of these handles. So if you have a handle, you have set a lot of options, like 20 options, 30 options, however many options, and you want to make um, a copy of that, a duplicate, an identical copy, basically. Not quite, but almost. And then we have a curl easy dupe handle is the, is the um, function name. It basically takes a handle and it copies all the options and makes another one. So you have two handles. Have, with, they're different. They have the same set of options. And they actually, uh, they copy it. I mean, when you, you, when you duplicate the, the handle, it copies all the strings that the other one copied and had their own point resolved. So the second one also has their own uh, versions then of all those strings. So yeah, one copy each, except when it copied the this copy post fields buffer. It treated it as a string. And it really isn't. Because, it, I mean, in an HTTP post, you can send whatever. It's pure binary. You can send, yeah, anything. Anything goes. And libcur supports it. You can just say, here's a buffer with random binary data. This is, it's this big, send it. But internally then, when when libcurl was about to copy one handle to another handle, it would use, use this str dup, str dup function in C, which, as you all know, it stops at a binary zero in, in the data. And if there's no zero, it won't stop at all. So it could then potentially read beyond the buffer. If you had a buffer without a zero, it would read beyond the buffer and uh, potentially crash. But that wasn't really the problem. If it would crash, you would crash. Uh, and, and that could potentially be a problem, but not, that's not the, uh, possibly not the serious one. Uh, but if there was a zero in there, it would actually, um, it would stop there. So it would only copy then the first part of the buffer or what it thought was the buffer. It would only copy the, the beginning of the buffer or, or up to the first binary zero, and it would set that as a size, and it would go on to use that. But it wouldn't update the pointers that would still point to the old buffer, which then made that you got a size that was too small and it was pointing on the old buffer. And if you would then go ahead and free the old handle, for example, it would point to some memory that you have no idea anymore where it points to. Or well, you could potentially be very, very crafty and, and have a good idea where that would be pointing, and you could possibly exploit that. But it, anyway, since it was pointing on, on the wrong buffer, possibly way out in the memory somewhere, 
And then you would ask libcurl to do another transfer then on that copied handle that would do an HTTP post again. It would use the wrong size and it would read the data from the wrong place in memory, which uh, then potentially could send out a good chunk of um, data to the server that you really never intended to send. Um, I don't know anyone who actually suffered from this. This, I mean, it was discovered by, by, by I don't remember his name, but it's, it's in the advisory and you should read it. Uh, and uh, yeah, he, he figured it out that it could happen. And we've kind of uh, been a whole team of people that have tried to analyze exactly what's, what the problem is and what could happen and, and why and so on. But I've never heard of anyone that actually got affected by this in kind of an, in, in a malicious way or anything. I think um, I know that it has crashed a couple of people's programs like you. Yeah, you get a seg fault when this happens, but then you fix your, you can work around this easily by not using the dot panel or um, not using the copy post fields, and then you're fine. There is a little gotcha in when you're using PHP, actually, because PHP uses this copy post fields um, option kind of behind your back. So when you use the normal curl opt post fields, well, normal, it looks like the, the C one. Even when you use that one in PHP, it actually uses the copy one under the hood. So you're actually always using the copy one without actually knowing it. So that, it might be slightly higher risk that you actually suffer from this um, when, when using PHP, the PHP curl extension. I'm not exactly sure that it, it has. I mean, there's a there, fairly long shot that you would actually get hit by this in a really nasty way. But there is a risk, and that's why we did uh, the advisory. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, uh, that was the 7.39.0, the biggest uh, bug fix in there. Mm, I wanted to mention also that I kind of redid the thanks section on the website. I, I, can't, I try to record every contributor to curl ever. I did mistakes in the beginning, but I try to always keep track of everyone and whoever um, helps out. Bug fixes, bug reports, contributions, uh, even uh, yeah, bug reports, yeah, and, and uh, whatever. And I try to record all the names and I collect them in the thanks document in the, in the source uh, package. And on the website, I generate a thanks page. And this, now I kind of remade it to be, look better on the web. And we also made, um, I got some help from Frank, a, a contrib contributor to remove a couple of duplicates. And, and names are really hard sometimes to, to not get duplicates from since people are called Christopher, but they call themselves Chris at times, or Dan, Daniel, David, Dave. Uh, and then all sorts of local variations of that. So, yeah, we've actually removed like 10 or 15 duplicates and we have a little script now that helps us do this better in the future. At least those known duplicates, so we should reintroduce them at least. Yeah, uh, yeah that's about uh, the previous release. And then, of course, once we've done the release on that Wednesday, last Wednesday, November 5, bang, I, I do the, I run a, I do the tag in Git and I, I run my script that makes the tarball. I have a single script that builds everything and puts everything in the tarball and it's, I, I GPG sign it and I put, I upload it to the website. I update the website files and I push everything and then the site updates itself and show uh, all the new. Then of course, then there's, then the window opens for new changes for the next release. So when? Everything is open. We bump the release number that we expect the next version to get, or possibly get. Um, and um, so now we're. Uh, um, I know that Steve Holm, uh, one of our core contributors, is working a lot with the, doing more stuff with the Windows SSPI uh, features. So he's doing digest uh, authentication for HTTP with that, for example, and he's doing also some uh, Kerberos five stuff for Windows and the. Uh, there's also been more um, more work uh, for various things. I can take a quick look. Yeah, there's been a bunch of bug reports too. I actually, one of my, my um, 
one of my later bug fixes in uh, uh, in um, in the previous release then uh, actually broke the comp the compilation for um, with the, the Visual C Windows compiler. So we had to fix that, and there were some other minor stuff that we've kind of cleaned up. So we're kind of full steam ahead towards next release, and we're working on. Um, there's this, I mentioned it before, but it's coming back live now, of course. So, so there's this SIFS SMB file system uh, support patch. Uh, it's, hopefully it's going to get the review soon and start, and start to merge. We have a lot of fine uh, pipelining fixes that are in the progress of getting reviewed and, and worked on and hopefully merged really soon to improve our pipelining, HTTP pipelining support. And there's uh, a lot of CMake fixes to really polish up the, the CMake build system for, for Curve, which really hasn't been top-notch for, for a long while, and it seems to be getting somewhere at least. Mm, that's about it. Um, I, there was more changes, but I can't remember. Yeah, there's also this um, OCSP... Um, what is it called? Er Never mind. Um, so there's um, there's a lot of action going on, and um, we have a couple of weeks left to merge features, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to review a lot of patches and uh, give comments, and uh, hopefully get some stuff done myself too. I have a really uh, I really never get around to actually do any features or, or major development myself. So yeah, I, I really want to get around to that, but we'll see. I, I didn't mention anything about any other projects like Firefox today, but I'll say that for another week or next week or whatever. I'm going very long with this this week anyway. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, and happy 10th anniversary again to Firefox. Uh, and um, see you again next week. Bye.